The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith in me as well. In God's house there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you, and then I will come back to take you with me, that where I am, there you may be as well. You know the way that leads to where I am going. Thomas replied, but we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I myself am the way. I am the truth, and, the, and I am the life. No one comes to Abba God but through me. If you really knew me, you would know Abba God also. From this point on, you know Abba God and you have seen God. Rabbi Philip said, show us Abba God and that will be enough for us. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you don't know me? Whoever has seen me has seen Abba God. Don't you believe that I am in Abba God and God is in me? The words I speak are not spoken by myself. It is Abba God living in me who is accomplishing the works of God. Believe me that I am in God and God is in me, or else believe because of the works I do. The truth of the matter is anyone who has faith in me will do the works I do and greater works besides. Why? Because I go to Abba God and whatever you ask in my name, I will do so that God may be glorified in me. Anything you ask in my name, I will do. The Gospel of the Lord. It'd be so easy today to focus only on the words, I am the way and the truth and the life from this text. I have always loved that verse, and I have often wanted to just wrap it around me like a security blanket. Martin Luther called the first six verses of this text the best and most comforting sermon that the Lord Christ delivered on earth, a treasure and a jewel not to be purchased with the world's goods. These verses have become the foundation for comfort, not only for the disciples, but also for us. However, as I read the text in preparation for today, I found myself instead focusing on three things. First, do not let your hearts be troubled. Second, Thomas's statement that they didn't know where they were going. And finally, Philip's request that Jesus show them the Father. I wonder if we too sometimes find our hearts troubled, question the way, and wanna know why we don't sense God in our troubledness. What troubles your heart today, in this minute? There is a lot in the world to be troubled about. And for me, the list has gotten longer and longer. It's often filled with ugliness and dread. I think about all the prayers I've lifted up, that we've all lifted up. Acceptance for all of God's people, that the violence and suffering in the world ends, that our political system will someday work the way it's supposed to. And I can easily get worried about health care, immigrants, refugees, my black and brown siblings, and all those that identify as queer or different. I think about my own sorrows, anger, losses, and disappointments. I think about the ways today's gospel gets interpreted and is used to exclude, condemn, and beat others up. I stand before you a newly minted pastor, a pastor who identifies as trans. In a country where states are rushing to take my right to live into who I am away from me, there are only six states that have not passed or are trying to pass some form of anti-LGBTQIA legislation. Let me say that again. There are only six states out of the 50 that are not working to pass or have passed some form of anti-LGBTQI legislation. And in almost all of those that do have some form of legislation, it's directed at our youth. Our youth, 
When I accepted preaching responsibility for today, we had recently experienced our 130th school shooting. There had been 530 school shootings in my lifetime. That's almost nine shootings for every year I have lived on this planet. That's a lot of children, but looking at the numbers since Columbine is even harder. According to the Washington Post, there have been 377 school shootings since 1999 and 349,000 students have experienced gun violence at school. Despite what we are told about not letting our hearts troubled, my heart is troubled, and I'm fairly certain that yours is too. What would you add to the list? What, tr what is troubling in your heart today? None of us get through this life without a troubled heart. I don't think it is possible to look at the pain of the world today, the suffering of a loved one, or our own difficulties and not have a troubled heart. I hope and pray we can't. That's the circumstance I hear Jesus say, do not let your hearts be troubled. Our circumstances are not that different from when Jesus said those words to the disciples. The Last Supper is coming. The dark hours that night before the Lord was betrayed, abused, tortured, and ultimately crucified. Thomas feels lost and asks, how can we know the way? Philip has lost all direction and can't see what is right in front of him. And Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Are you kidding me, Jesus? Don't you see? People are being killed because of who they are. Jesus, you cannot be serious. Children are dying. Jesus, don't you see what is happening? Jesus sees and is trying to tell us something here, but it's not like we can just turn off our troubled hearts. How do we begin to make sense of today's gospel in a world whose heart is constantly troubled? Do not let your hearts be troubled in the original Greek literally means stop letting your hearts be troubled. Jesus knew that troubled hearts were already happening. The disciples, in fact, were probably terrified. I know I would have been. They were fully convinced that Jesus was the Messiah, but the concept of Messiah they had, you can probably see in kids today as they play. Their concept is a conqueror or a superhero, the one who gallops in on a white horse and saves the day. Their hopes, despite all they had already been told, had risen even higher when just a week before this, Jesus had come riding into Jerusalem. It would be okay, they thought, as everyone had thrown palm branches down and worshiped him. Stop letting your hearts be troubled. Jesus knows that our hearts are troubled. This isn't about what's happening in the future. Jesus knew then and knows now that troubling, the worrying, has already begun. Jesus sees the troubled hearts in us because he has been troubled himself. When Lazarus dies is the first time that comes to mind, but also later that night, that very day, the night he would be betrayed as he tried to pray. He also knows that our lives and the world are not defined by or limited to what troubles. Stop letting your hearts be troubled. What if to stop letting your hearts be troubled starts with taking an honest look at our world and inside our very core? It's time to truly see and name our troubles. This means we face ourselves, our lives, and our world. That may be the first and most difficult thing Jesus asks us in today's gospel. Stop letting your hearts be troubled. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't want to see. It's the very last thing I want to do. No, I don't want to name the stuff that troubles me. It is hard and uncomfortable to name the things that hurt my heart. I feel like I might get swallowed up by a collapsing life and a collapsing world. I feel like I might be forever stuck in the darkness. Lord, we do not know where we are going. How can we know the way? Where do we go when everything is collapsing around us? Here's the thing, sometimes we have to walk with the sense of, with our, we have to walk and spend a time with our troubled hearts before we can walk in a space of peace. 
This makes me think about a group of weeblos I took on a camping trip one time. These were mostly city kids, but I remember the first night. It was a beautiful night, but they were a bit scared that we found ourselves with only a fire and a few flashlights for reassurance. Then they looked up and saw the stars. Stop letting your hearts be troubled. Have you ever seen the stars when there's no artificial light competing with them? You know their experience. If your heart is troubled, then it's time to look up. It means bringing your name troubles and lifting them up to the one who can hold them. It doesn't mean that your heart won't continue to be troubled, but what it does is connect to the way, the truth, and the life. We are no longer lost in the darkness, and we are connected to the one who can hold our troubledness. It also means that we recognize that the power to hold all that troubledness is Jesus, not us. Stop letting your hearts be troubled and look up. When our hearts are troubled, when we question the way and we wonder if God is there, to, we need to look up. We already know the way to this place of calm and hope. Jesus tells us that the Father's house is for us, that we are not the fix for troubled hearts. God is. And I hear and I see across the night sky, there is room. There is room. There is room for my heart's troubledness. There is room. There is room for my worries and yours. There is rooms for folks like me who are different. There is hope. There is room. Amen.